Most skateboards are made with hard maple veneer. Maple is often regarded as the best wood for skateboards. And ever since I started making boards, I wondered if we could use some other material, something that would cultivate more biodiversity among trees where we're not dependent upon shipping one species of tree all over the world to make skateboards. Could wood from our backyard be used to make a board that is just as good, good enough, or even better than maple? Over the summer, I reached out to LumberCycle to seek an answer to this question. LumberCycle is an organization here in San Diego that reinvests fallen trees back into the, their community, our community, by diverting woody biomass from landfills and essentially creating a zero waste usage for trees, which is awesome. So basically they're taking trees that would otherwise end up in a landfill that have fallen down around San Diego and turning it into usable lumber for woodworkers and woodworking educators. When I reached out, the <laughs> response I got back was so supportive and we quickly scheduled a meeting to meet up at their mill and pick out a log to turn into a skateboard. At their mill we decided that red gum eucalyptus would be a good choice for making this first board. They used their mill to cut the log into thin sheets of wood that are a little bit thicker than the final thickness I was seeking for the veneer, which would be 1 16th. I was just going to do what I do for maple to start out with this testing. And I just want to say that another way you could do this is by taking already kiln dried lumber and resawing it on a bandsaw because I realized not everyone may have access to a mill like this one. So there's multiple ways to go about it and this is the method we tried and in fact starting with kiln dried lumber may be better and I'll get into the reasons why later.
Once all the wood was cut, I took it down to the shop to try and dry it out. I took all the sheets and I stacked them with paper towels in between them, and paper, and I tried to change it out like once a day, once every two days, and I did this for a while, maybe about a week or so, and was seeing very little change in the moisture content. I originally thought it would dry out really quickly and really easily, being that it was cut into such thin strips. And the reason I need to dry it out to begin with is because this was a log that we cut that was pretty fresh, so it was still pretty wet, meaning it had a high moisture content. And I've been using the same, or I set out to use similar specifications for the eucalyptus as is used for maple veneers for setting my raw material. So I worded that really weird. Basically, I wanted to use 1 16th inch eucalyptus veneers and I wanted to get it to the same moisture content as maple veneers, which is around 6 to 10% based on what I've seen in my research. And just start there as a starting point. So I thought, all right, this is pretty thin wood. It'll dry out pretty quickly. I was wrong. It, after a few weeks of changing out the paper and having fans blowing on it all stacked up, I realized this isn't, this isn't drying out as quickly as I would like it to. I need a better method. However, I noticed that as it was drying out, even though it was going very slow, it was starting to warp and twist a little bit. And this was concerning to me because it's going to be really hard, or it would be really hard to sand this down to an even thickness if the veneers all warped. Especially after feeling some of this drier eucalyptus, it's really stiff. So I took the sheets of wood and I trimmed them to a shorter length because they were originally like pretty long and put them all through a drum sander, which is a machine that sands the surfaces of what you run through it and helps you achieve a nice even thickness. I ran all these through the machine until they were about 1 16th of an inch thick. And now I felt a lot better about trying to dry out the veneer. I also wanted to make crossband veneers before I dried it out too because these would also be hard to make if the veneer was all warped and twisted. For the crossband veneers I cut, since we cut everything with the grain, I cut these pieces out so that I can splice them together so that the grain is all going crosswise. And I've done this before with other veneers and it does work fine because these only need to provide strength in the lateral direction because the core veneers are going to provide the strength in the longitudinal direction. For these I'm going to simply glue them together at the seam and then use some tape to join them. This doesn't have to be a super strong bond, it really just has to be strong enough so that I can lay these down on top of the other veneers and glue them up without these coming apart. And I'm not gonna be pulling these apart because again, these only need to be strong in this direction, not this direction, which is the direction of the seam. Here is my latest attempt at drying out this veneer. I have it stacked. Not really actually, it's just one layer. I took five pieces because I don't want to screw it up with all of them and put some of these pieces of wood on either side to get some airflow going. Put some weight down 
you can see it's already starting to warp a little bit, but hopefully that's a good sign that it's drying out. It's already all sanded to the correct thickness. And hopefully this time it works a little bit faster. Now, if I had resawed lumber that had already been dried to the desired moisture content, I probably wouldn't have seen so much warping of these veneers. Drying out large pieces of lumber, however, does take a long time. Just something to keep in mind if you try something like this yourself. I'm gonna do a quick little low-tech science experiment to compare the some of the bending properties of eucalyptus, the red gum eucalyptus, and maple. So what I've done is I took two blocks and where's the other one? There we go. And I have the red gum which has been dried out to about 10% moisture content. And I'm going to keep the positions of the blocks the same. And I'm going to apply a load played by the roll of tape here and measure the deflection of the red gum and then do the same thing with this maple veneer I have right here. And it's important to just measure the same spot here because you can see this is a super warped wavy piece of eucalyptus. So I want to make sure I'm putting this load in the center. All right, so we're at two and nine sixteenths. And now we're at two and seven sixteenths. So it dropped down about an eighth of an inch. This is about one and five eighths. And this has dropped down to about one and a half. So they both deflected about an eighth of an inch. Now I expect this to vary depending on the particular piece of maple and eucalyptus I get. Also, to technically get better data, I should do like 10 of these. But this is close enough of a ballpark and just by feel, since not a lot of, uh, this isn't carrying a lot of weight, this experiment, I'm just gonna go with that and say that this is about the same. So 10% moisture content, I'm gonna say is good enough for the eucalyptus. So that's gonna be my target moisture content that I'm going to get to. Hopefully this all works out great. Just did a dry run and I noticed there's this one spot where the compression isn't great. You can see that bubble is kind of being persistent and not compressing. So that's not gonna work. That'll create bubbles. We're at 12%, 11%. I think I'm just gonna call it and say, just go for it, especially after seeing how it was buckling a little bit in the vacuum bag. I really just want to try this and it's been like a month that I've had this, so I'm going to press it in the hydraulic press. So this is super DIY, we've got some DIY coated 3D model molds. So I'm going to press this and hope for the best. <laughs>
it has been two days or a day and a half, almost two days since I glued this. It's time to open it up. looks so rad. <laughs> My first thought taking this right out of the press is that it feels a little heavier than a fully maple board. And I guess I could weigh it. I do have some boards. I'll do that in a second. The other thing I was gonna say is that I'm going to hand shape this board. I often use the CNC router to cut out boards. I want to hand shape this just to get a feel for the material and what it feels like and develop more of like an intuitive sense of how it feels to cut. I may do future ones on the CNC, uh, especially if I do more of these, but just for this first prototype, I think hand shaping it is gonna be the way I go. So, maple board, it's been curing for a little bit. Four pounds and four pounds and five ounces for this maple board. Five pounds, 12 ounces for the red gum. Thirteen ounces, five pounds, thirteen ounces. So like a pound and a half more, it's heavier. <laughs> Shape looks perfect. The cut went really well. It wasn't actually that hard to cut through. It almost felt easier to cut through the maple, which I was kind of surprised about because I've heard that eucalyptus can kind of do something some work on your tools so there's a gum in it. And I'm gonna sand it now.
maple board is three pounds, four ounces. Eucalyptus board four pounds, 10 ounces. So you're probably wondering now, how does it skate? Just set up the board. It is super heavy, but I think it's gonna work because I think I've skated heavier long boards. How, yeah, just, how does it like? <laughs> it's so heavy. Oh, it's great. I wanna feel like. Hey, I think it's way stronger than a maple board would be. Woo! It was that popped better than I was expecting for how heavy it is. And I've got the 62 or 65 millimeter wheels on here. So, what, were they 62 or 65? Do you remember? I think they were 65, so I think yeah. they're like 10 millimeters bigger than the ones I normally ride. Woo! You, I can feel the weight behind it. It's like, it's, it, is, it is definitely a pound and a half heavier. <laughs>
Overall, I am so stoked with how this board <laughs> turned out. I've been skating it for about two months now and it has been performing amazingly. It's felt so good to ride around on. And I want to thank LumberCycle for helping make this happen. LumberCycle is such an awesome organization and if you are in San Diego, I definitely recommend you check them out. If you're not in San Diego, I still recommend you check them out because what they're doing is so cool and so inspiring and I would imagine that there's maybe other organizations around the world or the country that are doing similar things. So maybe you can find your own version of Lumber Cycle in your local community if you're not here in San Diego. Lastly, I wanted to mention that I am looking at selling some of these boards on the Open Source Boards website. I just launched an update to the website if you're watching this video when it first comes out at least. And I'd like to have these local boards for sale on there. So stay tuned on the website. Sign up for the open source boards email list if you're not on it already because that's where I'll announce when these are available. I'm also working on a new mold to press some of these boards and make them even more special. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider liking, sharing, subscribing, and or supporting open source boards through opensourceboards.com or through Patreon. I also just set up a SkateCAD Patreon page, which is for fundraising for SkateCAD, the skateboard design software that allows you to create custom boards and molds right in your browser. It was actually SkateCAD molds, and you could see my previous one of my previous videos about how I made those molds that I used to press this eucalyptus board. Thank you again so much, and have a great rest of your day or evening.